We flew from America to come here for, for two days. Just for the weekend. We just came here for the pasta. Yeah. <laughs> pasta and a scooter ride, yeah. My name's Paul. I fly airplanes for a living, but my passion is encouraging you to explore this beautiful world by giving you a glimpse into my layover life. Yesterday I landed in Newark and I have four days off starting today. Aaron and the kids flew out last night and we want to go somewhere, but we don't know where. So we're going to use the open search function of our employee reservation system to figure out a place to go today. Let's go to open search, starting from Newark to anywhere. Please don't say what it is. You don't want to know? No. Ooh. Paris has 232 open seats today. Naples has 139. Rome has 122. Delhi has 103. Frankfurt in has... India. Should we go to India? <laughs> <laughs> no, you need longer than four days to go. <laughs> yeah. Dublin has 86. Edinburgh has 77. <coughs> Venice has 75. Milan has 49. Milwaukee. <laughs> Milwaukee? We could go to Milwaukee. I have an idea. We should all like vote for our top two and then we'll like see who, like the top two and it has to have over 60 seats open. Okay. okay. Andres, what are your, what are your votes? Two options? Yeah. Um, Rome and Venice, and they filmed in um, Venice, Italy, in the Spider-Man movie. Julia, what are your choices? I'm for sure going to choose Rome and then I'll choose... Paris and Rome? <laughs> what do you choose? Rome and Paris. Naples and Rome. Yeah. The 840 flight to Rome has 21 seats in Polaris. The 5.30 p.m. only has three seats. So okay. if the 8.40 p.m., <laughs> we'd probably get Polaris. Rome? Yeah! I think we should do it. All right, Rome, here we come. All right, let's go. With our destination decided on, we found an Airbnb and our adventure began. As we made our way to the airport, I couldn't help but be thankful for a family who has such a sense of adventure that they're willing to wake up and go, as a hot air balloonist might say, wherever the winds blow. Cheers. It's a fun adventure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we just got our seat assignments. Pretty good. All Polaris. How about we go downstairs? I think they're gonna board soon. Before boarding, we had to pick up one very important item, chocolates for the crew. To fly as a non-revenue passenger in Polaris, you have to be eight years old. So this was our son's first time. And let's just say he was pretty excited. Look at all this cool stuff. Oh, headphones, bottles, headphones, and Yeah. Oh. All right, so you can move the pillow. You can move the pillows and stuff up here while you sit down, okay? Is cool. that cool? Yeah. And then a large, two large-sized pillows. Do you know what else you have? Uh, a shoulder harness, just like in the car. No. Yeah. You have to wear that to take out the landing, okay? Is that only for the landing? Only for take out the landing. Oh, right? so I can take it off when we're in the sky? Yeah. Are you happy with your Polaris experience? Yes. Yeah. But it hasn't even started yet. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Once it did start, it was pretty fun to see him so excited about it. But we had to get some rest because for the amount of time we had ahead of us, we couldn't show up tired, even if it meant skipping ice cream. Welcome to Rome, the local time is 1222 p.m. 30 million, 46 Ooh, hours cool. in Rome. <laughs> Starts now. <laughs> We found our Airbnb, we looked around quick, got changed, and ready to head straight out because we only had 44 hours left. Yeah. <laughs> we better go do something. Uh -huh. What are we doing tonight? We're going oh, wait. Let's see what this is for us. Okay. Okay. We are off to meet our friend Olga, who lives here. In two and a half hours, we're going on an adventure. We're gonna grab some food for Olga is a really dear friend of ours, but we hadn't seen her in over four years and had never met her son, Philip. As you're about to see, 
It was a very emotional reunion. Sorry, baby, my English has deteriorated. Hi, Olga. Hi. Hi. <laughs> it's so good to see you. Hi. This is Anders. You know, for me, you're like an inspiration always. Aww. Smile and call me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anders and Philip became fast friends, and the years we hadn't seen Olga quickly disappeared over a short time together. Before we said goodbye, we made time for one quick stop. What's next, Amelia? Gelato. Gelato? How many times are you going to get gelato in 46 hours? A lot. A lot. There are a lot of great gelaterias in Rome, but Frigidarium is probably my favorite. But use caution, because a brain freeze can strike quickly if you're not careful. After some pizza and gelato, we're off on a little adventure. We're gonna go ride. Best buds. <laughs> let's go. I've been wanting to do a tour with Scooter Roma for years now, and it did not disappoint. We motored off with three Vespas and two tour guides. I'm pretty sure my wife and daughter got more of an actual tour while my son and I just had fun ripping around Rome. But we did stop a few times to take in the views and learn some history of the Eternal City. One of our favorite parts of the tour was weaving our way through the crowded streets of Trastevere. Trastevere literally means beyond the Tiber River, and is a young, hip neighborhood great for people watching an aperitivo or some of Rome's best pizza. After a quick stop at Europe's only pyramid, the sun began to set as we made our way toward the Colosseum. And I have to say, riding past one of the seven wonders of the world was a pretty good finish to our first day. Morning. It is day two of our two-day trip to Rome. We are headed to breakfast. Breakfast is a hard thing to find in Rome as far as like an American breakfast goes. There's one place near the Pantheon called Ginger that we've been to before and we love it. So we are headed there for a quick breakfast. Ginger has omelets, acai bowls, and pancakes, but most importantly, coffee. This looks awesome. No, I don't want to ruin the design. <laughs> After a leisurely breakfast, we were off to explore. Our next stop was the Victor Emmanuel Monument. It was originally built to honor Italy's first king, seen on the horse here. Today, the eternal flame burns to honor Italy's unknown soldier. And for a small fee, you can ride an elevator to the top of the monument. A great spot for 360 degree views of the entire city. You can see the Colosseum, the Vatican, just the whole place. This is well worth the price of admission. Not too crowded either. After taking in the city views, we couldn't resist the magnetic pull the Colosseum seemed to have. We are headed to one of my favorite spots for a drink. And it's near the Coliseum. It's got a great view of the Coliseum, but it's not super touristy. It's not cheap though either. It's called the Court Rome. It's inside a boutique hotel called Palazzo Manfredi. So as it turns out, the court is more popular than it used to be. You used to be able to just walk in and grab a drink. They were not open, but they did let me go and film real quick. But the reservations today were booked up for the whole night. Today's a Wednesday. <laughs> so if you want to go there, it's worth it, but uh, make a reservation. Our last stop of the day was a photo spot our tour guides took us the day before. We wanted to come back when we were feeling a little more fresh. It's called Pont Degli Anibaldi, or something like that. It's located on a bridge nearby the Coliseum. With that, the last photos have been taken. We got some great shots of the Coliseum. We're gonna go find some food, and in about 12 hours, we're waking up to fly back home. Hopefully. We are waiting 
to go to the airport for a flight that has zero open seats. So I don't really know how today's going to go. I listed for the jump seat and wore my jump seat clothes. There's two flights to New York, the one we're listed on and the next one. So if we don't get on the first one, hopefully we'll get on the next one. It's going to be a day. I'm required to have two flights to get me to work in time. The next day, my trip started in Newark at 4 p.m., so I technically had three flights to get me there, two on this day, and one the next day. But I didn't really want to leave my family behind in Rome. On the way to the airport, I emailed the captain of the flight to let him know I might need to sit in the cockpit jump seat. We don't have jump seaters on international flights very often, so it's nice to know when you might have one. Okay. <laughs> Ciao, grazie. Ciao, bye bye, buona Bye bye, buona giornata. We have made it through security. The check-in line was huge, so I'm hoping maybe a few people will go. Obviously, I hate to see people miss their flights because of long security lines, but sometimes that's the only reason a non-revenue passenger gets a seat. Once we got to the gate, the waiting game began. After a quick chat with the gate agent, there was a glimmer of hope, but the stress levels were still high. She said we're probably going on board. No. I knew they're going to cry because I'm happy or cry if I'm stuck here. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, just minutes before departure, we got our seat assignments. I hope when I'm older, my kids will have dreams about this trip and remember their parents as the ones who flew to Rome on a whim and ripped around on lime scooters. Let them drink Fanta for breakfast and that one of the best things about travel is the people. I also hope that living a life collecting experiences instead of possessions would be part of the legacy they carry on. Because in my opinion, a good story is one of the most valuable things you can own. see the walls moving. <laughs> yeah, Matt, you can see the walls aren't moving. Yeah, you're, yeah we're moving. <laughs> how's, how's the view? <laughs> oh, careful, Cedar. Are you okay? <laughs> Boy, we already got a good blooper reel going. <laughs> Amelia just hit her head on the window and then hit her leg on the bed. You okay? <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Next up, we're going to go to the kitchen. <laughs> What did you just say, Ben? Gracias. Gracias. That's our wrong country. Gracias. <laughs> wow. Can't stop it. I can't keep up with all these things. Gracias. What? Gracias. Well, then there's like gracias. Gracias. That's Barcelona. Yeah. Gracias. Gracias. They say gracias. Gracias. Just gracias. No, they say gracias. <laughs> That's why I just stick to the thing. <laughs> you can say hello and thank you in the language you're at in. Kind of a courteous way to show some effort. <laughs> Let's go up, back up to that bridge that we were on last night. Can we get an Aperol spritz? Thank you. 